These stunningly remarkable and unique looking buildings can be seen throughout the Middle East and North Africa in some of the most arid and hot deserts. They have been found in Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Kuwait, Jordan, Egypt, and finally in Iran, where historians say they originate. So we're going to take a more in-depth look at why they started out in Iran. At the time when the towers were invented, the country was known as Persia, and due to its unique geographical location, it was one of the cradles of civilization. It's the 18th most populous country in the world, with a population of approximately 82 million people. In terms of total land area, it's the second largest country in the Middle East and the 17th largest country on Earth, covering 636,000 square miles. The country borders the Caspian Sea, Gulf of Oman and the Persian Gulf. At first glance, it's often mistaken as a completely arid country, but in fact, its climate and geography is extremely diverse. The country boasts rangelands, forests, including rainforests, wetlands, and even glaciers. However, the country has no major rivers, with the only navigable river being the 525-mile-long Karun. Only about 22% of its land area is desert, compared with its neighboring countries, like Saudi Arabia with 95% desert, Turkmenistan with 80% desert, and Iraq with 40% desert. Farming first evolved in this land 10,000 years ago, and considering this long tradition, the focus has been on sustaining yields over time, rather than short-term maximization of profits. The country also boasts curiously interesting ancient architecture, such as wind towers, which create the effect of air conditioning without the use of electricity, and they're called bagheers. They also have these huge domes to store and even make ice, and they're known as yakshaws, both of which we have covered in previous videos. Today, we're going to take a look at another ingenious architectural design that is so useful and integral to survival in this country's desert. Local farmers have a problem that the soil of their lands lack adequate nitrogen and without any notable rivers that wash nitrogen-rich sediment downstream. The farmers of the region came up with their own ingenious invention, and that's where these towers come in. These towers are described as vernacular architecture, a type of structure that is architecturally unique but has no single creator, likely passed down by families throughout the ages, therefore it's unknown when exactly they were invented. But there are records of their existence dating as far back as the 4th century. Farming first evolved in Iran 10,000 years ago, and considering this long tradition, the focus has been on sustaining yields over time, rather than short-term maximization of profits. And it's these particular towers that became a crucial part of the agricultural economy, providing much-needed fertilizer for melons, cucumbers, and other nitrogen-demanding crops, all cornerstones of Persian cuisine. So how do these towers provide natural fertilizer with minimal effort and practically for free? First, the design plays a crucial role. The towers are made up of unbaked adobe bricks plastered with mud and can be as tall as 60 feet. Timber was seldom used. Secondly, inside the towers there are ledges of bricks creating mesmerizing patterns that enables the maximum number of coves with a minimum amount of building material. And it's these honeycombed shaped coves which the towers are specifically designed for and that's to provide a place for doves to roost. Pigeons can enter through the holes around the outside of the towers or from the top of the structure depending on the design, which are inaccessible to snakes, the pigeon's main predator. By creating a home for these birds, the nitrogen-rich guano that the pigeons deposit can be collected, which is shoveled up several times per year and sold to farmers as a natural fertilizer. For centuries, pigeons played a significant role in the Persian economy and political system. Rulers even taxed owners of pigeon towers, the equivalent of taxing salt or fossil fuels. This ingenious invention became so popular that during the 16th and 17th centuries, the idea spread across India and then to the United Kingdom and France, where only the richest people were allowed to build these beautiful towers just for the pigeons. Because unlike chicken or ducks, wild pigeons are extremely low maintenance. By just providing water and shelter, the pigeons will come. Unlike the Persians who abstained from eating pigeons, 
the European elite enjoyed cold pigeon pie, and instead of using dovecotes for fertilizer, they preferred to extract saltpeter from the pigeon guano, which was mixed with charcoal and sulfur to make gunpowder. Nowadays, people in the UK and France do not use them, and they have fallen into disrepair. But across the Middle East and North Africa, they have become increasingly more popular in recent years, with new dovecotes being built to this day. And there's a new wave of interest for pigeon towers in India's cities as a way to provide housing for birds and produce fertilizer in densely populated urban areas. Often pigeons are seen as pests in cities such as London and Paris. But maybe these inner cities could do with some modern designs for dovecotes too. So what do you think? Let us know in the comments and make sure to check out these videos about more ingenious ancient architecture. If you're interested in the work we do, make sure to check out this link here.